you've got double bonds. Okay. You are treated with an MCPBA, and then you got to know what is MCPBA, right? That's a peroxy acid, so it makes an epoxide. So it's a double bond. Peroxy acid makes an epoxide. When the epoxide goes top or bottom of the ring, that's choice is yours, but at least it occupies one space completely. In the second step, you treat an acidic water, meaning that now you're going to get an oxygen protonated, that's totally electric density from the carbon. But this molecule is symmetrical. Left side is the same as the right side, but top side is the same as the bottom side. So if they are losing equal amount of density, so it doesn't really matter which carbon they attack, you get the same products anyway. So the park side gets protonated, and then losing it to density from the either carbons, and the water makes an attack from the either carbon, opens it up so you get a diol. But you get a diol in trans relationship. So this is what you need to show for the test. You cannot use a regular single line. You are getting trends, so don't try to use a regular solid line. You're going to use a vacuum dash line to show that it's going to make a trend. Same kind of question. If you do that, same thing in methanol. This is kind of, kind of thing we did it before. Then we're not getting the same product. You are getting the same oxide. It makes the oxide the same. Oh, this time I also kind of um, and the method which is the one core. So that is not an asymmetry. So now you've got to care for the position, right? So this is one, the different three substituted double bonds, more substituted here, less substituted there. When you make an epoxide, it doesn't matter because it makes a three member ring. But when you protonate that, now that will make an epoxy oxygen electron deficient. That's going to pull the density from those two carbon. But the more substituted carbon will lose more of the density. So the new copile is going to attack that carbon. What is the new copile? Not water, because we're not doing it in water. We are doing it in methanol, right? That's the thing. You got to pay attention to that. Methanol makes an attack on the more substituted carbon, opens it up. But when it makes an attack, it attacks from the back side. So it's an anti addition. This alkyl methoxy groups is the uh, opposite side of the epoxide oxygen. So it has two trends. And then this methanol makes an attempt to the more substituted carbon, right? This is of ego products, I would say. So, oops, so, so the methoxide is sitting on the more substituted carbon, OH sitting on the less substituted carbon because of these mechanisms. And then there has to be trends. So you can see that depending on how you do it, may get different outcome. So I really want you to be careful of the solving part. So do not just try to answer things mechanically because you see the box that all it's at the diol. No, it doesn't always that. It depends on how you use it. So I hope that you remember this. Um, similar question, or is it actually the same thing? Why am I having the box? Oh, yeah, this. Yeah, that's the base what we just talked about. You got epoxide formation, opens up with the water, you got diol, but you got trans diol. If you do the same thing with the argon tetroxide and the peroxide, then you are getting a diol, two hydroxyl groups added, but on the same side. We can see that these two reagents are made with different products in only difference in stereochemistry. So that's the reason you got to show the stereochemistry in the products. You cannot use a single line. That means that you don't know what is their chemistry. So the oxide opening up in acidic water, it makes a trans diol. When you do it in the osmium tetroxide or the permanganate codon diol, that it makes a cis diol. So you have to specify that in answer these questions. And obviously, you're going to get the electromers, but I would say that would be a So you're going to have to show me. Well, I don't know.